Hey guys, it's Sagar, and in this video, I'm going to unbox this new 4K Apple TV with the redesigned remote. Now, this is my first ever Apple TV, so I don't have any experience with the previous generation Apple TVs. So I'm just as new to this as most of you guys are. So together, let us try and find out what's all the fuss about. Now, I wasn't going to get this Apple TV 4K because my LG TV has all the apps and even has AirPlay 2, so I can stream anything from my phone or even Android phones to it. But I saw some of the recent reviews which showed this set-top box giving a better viewing experience. And since I started watching more and more content on my TV, I thought I should give it a try. I tried getting it locally from offline stores, but none of them had it in stock. So I quickly went to Apple's online store and ordered this Apple TV 4K and some other stuff with it. And within the next 18 hours, it was delivered to my doorstep. This is actually much faster than my Amazon Prime and Flipkart orders to get delivered to my doorstep. Before we unbox it, if you are new to this channel, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon next to it so that you get notified whenever a new video goes live on this channel. I am trying to get this channel to 200k subscribers by the end of this year and I need your help for that. Coming back to the unboxing, since I got it from Apple's online retail store, it comes in this brown box which holds the Apple TV firmly in its place. If you get it from offline stores, this is the box that you will get it in. This box is actually much heavier than I expected. There is a photo of the Apple TV box and the new remote at the top. Behind the box are some of its features and a brief list of wireless devices that you can connect it with. Now I went with 32GB storage because I don't plan on storing a lot of apps or games on it. For just 2000 rupees more, you can double the storage. So if you think you will need more storage for all your apps and games, you can choose that option. Alright, let me go ahead and remove this protective plastic. It's been a long time since I've needed a knife or a cutter to get into Apple's boxes. It's a bit strange feeling to open one of the Apple products with a cutter. Once we get the plastic and lid off, the Apple TV box and the remote control are sitting at the top. Here is the set-top box itself. It seems to be mostly made of plastic and again it is heavier for its size. Right now it is covered in protective stickers and we will remove them once we check out other things in the box. Next up we have the redesigned remote. Then there is the power cord which delivers the power to this set-top box followed by Apple stickers, a user's guide and a leaflet with some warranty and regulatory information. There is also a USB to lighting cable to charge the remote controller. And that's it. Now despite of charging 18,900 rupees, Apple does not include HDMI cable in this box, which is actually an essential component to connect this box to your TV. When you're looking for an HDMI cable, make sure it is HDMI 2.1 so most of the features work for you. I'm using this one from Amazon Basics and it seems to be supporting all of the formats so far. I will leave a link to this one and a few other good options in the description section if anyone is interested in picking them up. Let me clear these things and we will get to peeling the stickers of the Apple TV box. There is one sticker protecting the base of the unit, peeling which reveals the Apple logo. There are some vents right above this base to let the air in and out so the box doesn't heat up too much. Removing this plastic from the sides reveal glossy plastic sides and the ports at the back. There is an Ethernet port if you want to connect to your network that way. Then there is the HDMI port and finally a power port. That's it. Those are all the ports that you get on this Apple TV. Now let's get to the remote, which for some reason most people are more excited about. I haven't used any of the previous generation Apple TVs, so I don't know how big of an upgrade this one is, but I like how this remote looks and feels in my hand. It is not too small or big, not too heavy or too light, it just feels good in my hand. There are round buttons for navigation at the top, and there is also a touch sensitive pad between them, so instead of pressing on the corner buttons, you can just swipe on it. There are a few more buttons on the front to control the playback and volume and the Siri button is on the right side. There is also a power button at the top and a lightning port for charging this remote at the bottom. Overall, I like this remote. Like all of the Apple products, setting up this Apple TV is so simple. All you have to do is connect it to your TV via the HDMI cable, plug in the power cord, turn it on and just bring your iPhone closer to it. You will get a notification on your phone to set it up, click on it and it's done. It connects with your Apple ID gathers the Wi-Fi passwords automatically and by following a few simple instructions that are shown on your screen, it is set up within a few minutes. If you don't have an iPhone, don't worry, you can still use it, but you will just have to add in all the usernames and passwords manually, which will take a little extra time and that's it. This Apple TV has a 12 Bionic processor, so it now supports HDR10 videos at 4K 60fps and there is HDMI 2.1 support, so maybe we might even see 120fps unlocked with future software updates. It also has Wi-Fi 6, so if you have a router that supports it, the speeds will be blazing fast so you won't have any issues while streaming content. 
You can play games on Apple TV, but this new remote doesn't have accelerometer or gyroscope, but you can connect the controllers from your game console and play games that way. You can even connect external speakers to the Apple TV via Bluetooth. I have some new speakers that I am going to connect to it, but I want to save that for another video, so we are going to talk more about this in an upcoming video. Once it is set up, the interface is pretty simple. You have all your Apple services here like Apple TV, Apple Music, Apple Arcade and so on. If you have subscription for these services, they work seamlessly on your Apple TV and you can even install additional applications and games from the App Store. If you have one of the newer iPhones, it can shoot 4K Dolby Vision HDR videos. Now you can send them and play directly on your Apple TV which is something that I have wanted to do ever since these new phones came out. Now I told you before that this LG TV has AirPlay 2 built in. But when I play these videos on this TV, after the initial few seconds, the video starts to lag and lose a few frames. But the playback is extremely smooth when I am air playing it to the Apple TV 4K. I haven't had it for a long time, but I can still tell you that out of all the set-top boxes that you can get, tvOS offers you the best user interface. But then yes, it also costs more than any other streaming boxes. I have also noticed that everything loads up extremely fast on this Apple TV compared to the apps on my LG TV. Now these are my raw thoughts and I have not done any testing about it, but I feel the content appears a lot better. The image quality and audio, everything is better on Apple TV 4K. I feel if you are into Apple's ecosystem like I am, it can be a very good addition to tie everything together. As I said before, I am new to the Apple TV. So for the next couple of weeks, I am going to use it, test it out and try to figure out if the image quality and audio is really better than the apps on my LG TV and then bring my full review for you guys. In that video, I will try and answer that if you already have a smart TV, should you still invest in this set-top box? Or if you already have the previous generation 4K Apple TV, should you still get it or should you just buy the new remote to go along with it? So until then, that is it for this video guys. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel for more quality tech videos like this. You can also check out some of the other videos from this channel. This has been Saga and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care.